for choking Russia's access to technology that will sap its economic strength and weaken its military for years to come. Tonight, I say to the Russian oligarchs and the corrupt leaders who built billions of dollars off this violent regime, no more. It was a fundamental shift over the weekend for the G7, of course led by the U.S., but also with Europe, Japan, Canada, the U.K., to sanction a G20 central bank. Unprecedented. The G7 brought down the heavy financial hammer against the 11th largest economy in the world, and every country in the world took notice. Nothing like this has ever happened before. It's not the same as sanctioning Iran's central bank, sanctioning Venezuela, sanctioning North Korea. It's different fundamentally, it's different financially. Close to $400 billion were frozen. It's like the equivalent of Austria's GDP being taken out of your bank account overnight. I think the sanctions in general are very effective. Uh, in general, they're more effective ahead of time. So I would have been putting more sanctions on earlier on. Um, I don't think sanctions alone are in any way an off-ramp, but there's no question at this point I would be putting on more sanctions. As an example, I think the administration's sanctions of SWIFT and, and others are a good start. There's a carve-out for oil and gas from Russia. I would immediately uh, cease any payments in the, the energy markets. The fact that money is still going to Russia through that is something I would stop immediately, and I would sanction more people that are around Putin. Yes, you have a tale of two cities, and, and I think, you know, the most important thing in the news right now is Russia and Ukraine. But if we sort of acknowledge that and, and you know, the humanitarian impact and, and shift to markets, um, Russia is about 3.11% of the world economy. Ukraine is less than half a percent. You know, once this sort of falls to the wayside, I, I think that we'll kind of go back to the Fed being the biggest risk to the markets. And, you know, to your point, we're talking about cloud and multiples. A lot of the froth has been taken off of the market and off of those names. And specifically, if we talk about cloud growth, I mean, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, they have 36 to 40 percent year over year growth fourth quarter in the cloud business. And that's a secular trend that's likely to continue. So I think inflation or not, the multiples are lower. These are good entry points. And, you know, volatility aside, I think we look back and this is this is sort of that FOMO trade if, if you're not looking to get into it. The market has already priced out the 50 basis points. Um, it has priced now at 25 basis points. So he had no choice. Had he said anything else, it would have caused yet more market instability. Look, the Fed is in a really tough place of its own making. I want to stress this is of its own making. The invasion has made the situation more complex. And as you've heard me say, there is no first policy option now. That has gone. It was there last year. It's no longer available to the Fed. I'm surprised in the sense that, yes, there's a, there's a big geopolitical crisis going on and the market's been resilient. But what we've seen so far is that it hasn't been necessarily contagious to the U.S. economy and U.S. markets. And you have to remember, you can't take these things and ignore what happened with Jerome Powell yesterday. There was a huge uncertainty taken off the table. We were still questioning what the Fed would do in March, how quickly they would do it. He basically confirmed for us what they're going to do how they're going to start it and the chance that they'll go after it bigger in May or June if they need to. So I think taking some of those uncertainties off the table is a positive. And also remember, 
We've had a pretty big flush so far this year. So another uncertainty or another risk that was hanging out there was valuations. Look at where we were on January 3rd. Valuations were still so high, they posed a risk to the market. Now that risk has come back down off the table. We're closer to the five-year average, at least in the S&P.